ay na-apply uh, sa Pilipinas. Kailangan po ba regardless of age? Well, even the law recognizes that there are juveniles uh, and in fact, in the U.S., there are juvenile courts. I, I don't know in the Philippines, but uh, in the U.S., there are juvenile courts that try these cases. However, even youths had been guilty of very heinous crimes and they were tried as adults. So even the law uh, does not make being youth an excuse for very heinous crimes. And they are guilty of very heinous crimes, and it has happened several times in the United States. Uh, they are tried as adults, and that it will be the same position I take. Uh, we discriminate in terms of age for the very young, but when even the youth is guilty of very heinous crimes, he should pay for it. And I say that uh, murder uh, of the first degree still deserves the death penalty even for let's say a, a teenager from joshua chc uh, based on talion law would you say the capital punishment is a proper punishment for abortion uh, for the abortionist uh, uh, if he makes a profession of that yes i believe that that should be the punishment uh, I would think differently in terms of the mother, but uh, if there is a, uh, a deliberateness where there is a conspiracy between the mother and the abortionist, and by the way, most abortionists in the U.S. are not doctors. They have trained themselves just for abortion. Doctors, for the most part, a, a big majority of them still follow the Hippocratic Oath, uh, not to harm their patients. And uh, that is quite telling. So I believe in the capital punishment applied on professional abortionists, uh, but some punishment on those who seek abortion for themselves. Go ahead. Uh, yung sa isang interview ni Ping Lakso, nagkaroon siya ng change of view regarding sa capital punishment at ayon niya nang isulong yun. So, bilang Christian, lalo na po sa nangyayari ngayon na mataas ang extra judicial killings, is it wise to advocate um, death penalty in our country today even if our justice system is uh, they would say corrupt or delayed in the process. Well, I, uh, I, my belief is that a good government should carry out the use of the sword, which includes the death penalty. But given the, uh, given the crookedness of the system, there should be a more careful system of review uh, before any death penalty is carried out. Uh, and I think the priority of cleaning the system is to clean law enforcement and the judicial system because they are the most guilty of uh, failure to enforce justice. So until we have a credible law enforcement and judicial system, I will make the death penalty something that should only be done after the most careful, rigorous review of the case. Ito po natin si Ping. Other questions? Meron pa on capital punishment. After this, we proceed next week, God willing, to social ethics, which is the last branch of ethics and the bulk of our study will be on social ethics. So anything that remains on bioethics, matters of life that we have considered on health, death, abortion, capital punishment, uh, Ask them now before we proceed to social ethics.
Pastor Ike, Ike Barry of QBC. Yes, Ike. Uh, Pastor, made you a different question lang. Uh, what can we say about those lawyers uh, who continue to defend uh, murderers who, whom we can say there's a very clear uh, prima facie evidence? Uh, are they accountable though they are just doing their jobs? Well, first of all, uh, every accused has the right to legal representation. That's established in our constitution. <clears throat> so I will not deny them the right to have the best lawyer. But an honest lawyer should advise his client who he knows to be guilty to confess his guilt and lessen the penalty. But for lawyers, because of the legal fee they get, defend uh, the innocence that they know is not true of their client to me is questionable for a Christian lawyer. I will not question the legal right, the right of any accused to legal representation, but I will question a Christian lawyer who compromises what he knows to be the guilt of his client uh, just to earn his legal fee. Uh, that's lack of integrity to me. Thank you, Pastor. Okay. From yes. Peter Cargill of MRBC. <clears throat> In 2 Samuel 13, Absalom murdered his brother Amnon. Why is Absalom not punished for his actions? Well, it's one of the, let's say, the faults of David. Uh, out of his love for his son, uh, he spared him. And so what happened in the process? Absalom staged a coup d'etat, which almost toppled the kingdom of David. And uh, even then, uh, we could understand a father's love for his son, but uh, using one's influence to twist justice it's one of the sins of David. I believe that it was wrong. From Joshua, follow up on the lawyer question. Is a Christian lawyer obligated to report a client who committed a crime even though there is an attorney-client privilege? Well, that is not allowed by law. Uh, I, would, I would say that he should simply advise his client. Uh, if he knows his client to be guilty, from, from the, from the get-go, that is, from the time that he is being hired, he's not yet accepted the hiring, but if he knows that the client is guilty, uh, he should reject uh, unless he accepts his advice to confess his guilt. Uh, so for a Christian lawyer, to me, it is a matter of integrity. It is the... Uh, the inviolability of the truth. Uh, now, if you already are a lawyer because you accepted the position, you started uh, representing him, and then you came to learn something later, you may want to resign, but uh, you are bound by the law not to reveal the attorney-client uh, privilege. Just say, Mr. with doctors and patients. Uh, there are certain things that you are you are not allowed to do in order to maintain a good order of the court. From Lito Mana uh, Labay of Manawad, uh, is psychological disorder, the psychological disorder excuse a man from his crime of murder. Well, one of the def one defense strategy is uh, psychological uh, insanity the insanity plea. And it has its place because when one is proven to be insane, uh, then the moral guilt is diminished. Uh, the, the most famous case here was the assassin of Ronald Reagan, uh, uh, John Hinckley, who was in love with Jodie Foster and shot Reagan in 1981. Although he was not killed, but he was injured seriously. And yet, in the course of the trial, the plea was insanity. And it was really proven that Hinckley was insane. Uh, he wanted to 
get the admiration of Jodie Foster, who was then very, a very young actress. Uh, he wanted to get the attention of Jodie Foster by killing Ronald Reagan. He has many letters written that show that insanity. So yes, insanity diminishes the person's plea or the person's guilt, and that can be pleaded. Uh, but the person should be confined to a psychological institution and not to be released like a free man in society. Uh, Danny? Uh, Pastor, I, ano ka lang, in kung parang follow up lang sa question regarding dong kay Absalom. Can we conclude, Pastor, na yung death ni Absalom is an act of God as a judgment sa kasalanan ni Absalom? Well, in terms, yeah. in terms of God's sovereignty over life, when he could withdraw it, when he would give it, that's where we began in our bioethics, uh, God's sovereignty over life. And yet, that does not diminish the culpability of anyone taking life without due justice. Now, there was a clear instruction from the king for the soldiers pursuing Absalom and his troops not to harm Absalom. Uh, but Joab, in order to avenge what Absalom has done to him, remember Absalom had his farm burned uh, in order to compel him to uh, visit him. Uh, so in uh, Joab was acting vindictively, which was not his to exercise. And he disobeyed a direct order of his commander-in-chief. So that was wrong. But in terms of sovereign uh, decision, it's God's sovereign decision when a life is withdrawn, when a life is given. But that does not diminish the culpability of anyone God, taking life unjustly. Okay, other questions from Jomar in to what extent of grace that we can give to a repentant person who is subject to the death penalty. Well, I said that the death penalty is uncompromising in the case of murder. But in other heinous offenses, uh, there was a permission for ransom in the Old Testament Mosaic law. I would, uh, I would extend the same in our present legal system when the offense is death pen uh, when the offense is capital and the sentence is death penalty because of murder it should be carried out but before it is carried out the person uh, is saved i do not discount that that's possible and i know of cases before george w bush became president he was governor of texas and he was confronted with a case of a woman who was guilty of murder in the course of a burglary and a murder of a heinous kind. But in the course of her incarceration, she claimed to have been converted. In fact, uh, married a pastor while incarcerated. But George Bush, uh, by the advice even of some Christian counselors, refused to uh, commute her sentence and the death penalty was still carried out in Texas. And that's my position. If the crime is murder, the penalty should be uncompromising. But we do not discount the possibility of the murderer being saved before the death penalty is carried out. Arnel Bilando of SRBC Cuban. In the case of abortion, I believe the abortionist and the one intending to abort have the same liability and crime. How do we see the crime of the mother or the father who premeditated the murder of their child in the womb? Is it right that they deserve capital punishment too? Well, as I've said, uh, this is something that we see is a case in uh, the Mosaic law where uh, there are, there are quarreling persons and uh, the unborn child dies or the mother dies and there is a greater penalty on the case of uh, where the mother accidentally aborts her child. And I think that same hierarchy 
should be observed when it comes to abortion. I will, I believe in the murder as the case of ab aborting. Remember, in this case, uh, the mother is also guilty and there should be some penalty. I'm not just uh, satisfied with the idea that the mother who may be aborting her child for some reasons that maybe uh, she thinks is justifiable uh, should therefore be imposed a death penalty, but I believe in the death penalty on the abortionist who is a professional abortionist. That's my position. Other questions?